Proceed with the Xiaomi Mi 10. So this is one of two flagship phones from them just released with the Snapdragon 865. A 5G phone, by the way, with LP DDR5 RAM, basically blazing fast RAM, blazing fast, amazing specs that this has. So the non-pro version that I have has a slightly larger battery, but it lacks the optical zoom the pro version has. The pro version has also slightly larger, apparently better speakers. It also has a slightly brighter and better color gamut coverage screen that you probably won't even notice. So in this particular review, it's gonna be long, it's gonna be detailed. I'm gonna go over everything I can think of to answer most of your questions out there. Full specs of the phone can be found right up here, as you can see. For those that wanna see that, they are also down in the description of this video and some time codes, so feel free to skip ahead. This is a long, detailed, in-depth review. Now, I just wanna say first up, hats off to Trading Chengen that got this to me so quick, considering there are issues in China with delivery. They've got the problem with the coronavirus, which is quite serious, so they were literally risking their lives to get this phone out to me quickly. We've got our USB to Type-C cable, Type-C 3.5 mm adapter, 30 watt charger. Now it will charge the phone in around about one hour, so it is quite quick, but it does support Quick Charge 4 and Power Delivery 4. They also included Trading Chengen, a Type-C to USB adapter and a power adapter there for me. And lastly, we do have an included case here, which is quite a good one. So there is a texture to the back of it. It's quite hard and the outer edges are made of like a TPU material. It does cover the buttons and there is a raised lip on there for our camera. So according to my measurements here, it is a rather heavy phone at 211 grams. It is also quite thick at 9.4 millimeters. Now this is not with the camera bulge. If I include that, that brings it up then to 11.5 millimeters. So the build of this phone, as expected, is very similar to the Xiaomi Mi Note 10, which is on the left of the screen. It's a cross between, I would say, a Huawei P30 Pro mixed with a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, this build. You see why I say the frame is like a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, which is on the left here, because it is rounded just like the Mi 10, which is in the middle here. Of course, there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this one, sadly. Antenna lines are in the same location. Up the top is where you will find the top ported loudspeaker. These are actually quite loud. There will be a sample in this review. We have an IR transmitter, antenna line there, and secondary mic for noise cancellation. The SIM tray, like all of the Xiaomi flagships, will not accept a micro SD card, but it does take two nano SIMs, and we do have 5G support here. Now, the SIM tray is reinforced with metal, and it does have a rubber gasket around it. So this phone doesn't have an official IP rating at all, but it does have, according to Xiaomi, a P2i nano coating, which adds some level of splash resistance. So this is using the same main sensor as the Mi Note 10, which is that Samsung 108 megapixel HMX. This has an aperture of f1.69, and just above it, I believe, is our macro sensor or the depth sensor. So we have two two megapixel cameras. Now that depth sensor, okay, we might need this, but the macro camera I feel is a bit of waste, and I really would have loved to have seen, say, a three times optical zoom or two times optical in there without having to buy the Pro model to get the higher zoom lens. And this is our ultra wide here, which is 13 megapixels, which, which is in fact lower than the Mi Note 10. And then below that ultra wide is our dual tone LED flash here. This is where the Mi Note 10 would have the two megapixel macro camera. The front facing camera is a two megapixel one with an f2.0 aperture. You can see the bezels are quite slim. We do have an earpiece right up here in the top and you can just make out that top antenna line. So out of the factory, it does come with this pre-applied screen protector. Now they've done a perfect job of fitting it. There's no dust underneath it or bubbles that I can see. So I'm definitely gonna leave this on even though it does have Gorilla Glass 5 front and back. As for our display, so 6.67 inch display that is a real stunner here from Xiaomi. Now they claim the maximum brightness is gonna be 1,100 nits. With my meter, I'm measuring approximately 930 nits, which is still perfectly fine. It is a super bright display. It has a 90 hertz refresh rate. The resolution is Full HD+, so 1080 by 2340. The PPI is 387, so you're not gonna see any pixels on this. The touch sensing rate is also double the screen refresh rate, okay? So 180 hertz, meaning this screen is super responsive. Real world images, as you can see, just look really amazing on the screen. So the Mi 10 does have quite a curvature to it. This screen is very similar to the curve, I would say, to my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. The main thing is, am I getting accidental touches on those edges? I can trigger it sometimes, as you can see, and when holding it normally, 
occasionally, but it doesn't actually seem that bad. Now what Xiaomi has is in the settings is an option there where you can adjust that sensitivity to really reject the accidental touches along that edge of the screen. And I find it is working great. So even though it's got the edge, it's not really an issue when it comes to practical use. Then onto our performance now. So we have an Android 10 ROM running MIUI's 11, their skin and performance is great. So this is an Tutu version eight. It's only about 40,000 points more than the Republic of Gamers 2 phone that I reviewed last year that gets 510,000. So to me, if you were to get someone, okay, just a blind test here with an 855 plus or 855 mobile versus the 865, in real world use, you would not notice the difference at all. The same goes for gaming. You only see it in the synthetic benchmarks that a lot of people just tend to get too carried away with. So performance is very good. We have, yes, the notifications coming through and no complaints apart from occasionally, and I'm talking very minor, very nitpicking here, you will maybe see a tiny micro stutter when using full screen gestures. It just seems to be a little bit janky the way the animation is. And that's just down to optimization. Now RAM use, you can see that I have used up actually over half right there of that eight gigabytes. So MIUI definitely likes to eat into that and keep the performance up there. The 90 Hertz really is helping make this a super smooth phone. And as expected, it is Xiaomi's fastest and smoothest yet I have seen MIUI run. Now this is the import Chinese version. The global version could actually be delayed according to Xiaomi, I think about a month, maybe even more because of the issues they're having with the coronavirus outbreak there. So you do get some Chinese bloatware if you happen to be picking up one of the import Chinese versions here. But hold off, get the global, but it will probably be a little bit more expensive than this one. This is currently retailing for about 640, 50 euros, and it could even be 699 when released locally, so it really depends on what you need. Get 110 gigabytes free on our storage. Remember, non-expandable, no micro SD card support. And with our display, we do have options in there to set 60 hertz or 90, and I'm gonna keep it on 90, but after all, you've got a 90 hertz screen, why would you downgrade that to 60, unless, of course, you're running really low on battery, and that's why they give us this option. So there is no dynamic setting here for our refresh rate, unfortunately, like per app, which is great. Now other manufacturers do allow us to do this, and I hope that Xiaomi implements that into the future ROMs. Dark mode, of course, is here. You can schedule that, and it's good to have, especially with an AMOLED panel. Always on display, I probably gave you a few glimpses of that with the fancy B-roll, that it's working fine. We've got tap to wake, of course, and I'm not using it at the moment, rise to wake, uh, with the face unlocking and fingerprint unlocking, which I will show you just after this. Now you, this is where you can actually set the areas here. See in the red, where it will ignore, this is the default, any touches on the edges. And this is working really well. So even though it is a quite a curvature that it has to the screen, it's not an issue whatsoever in the whole time I've been using this phone. And that is great. So we do have NFC is on here, of course. And we've also got a 5G battery saver mode. We've got reverse wireless charging, which is supposed to be 10 watts. But it looks like from some of the advertising material in English that have downgraded that to now five watt reverse wireless charging. And if you're gonna be charging it with wireless charging, that is 30 watts maximum, which is great. And here is the wireless, so very, very quick, 605 megabits per second wireless transfer speeds. It's not actually the fastest I have seen, but it is right up there. And GPS, three meters of accuracy, this is typical. And we do have, I confirmed here, dual frequency GPS, so we'll use Level five, you can see we carry a frequency right here and level one, so that's why we get so many satellites in view there. Camera API to support is full level three. This is great news, this means we do have Google camera port support when we finally get some ports of that, of course, for Gcam. And this is a big surprise to me. This is a first. The Chinese ROM has a wide vine level one cert. Absolutely awesome that they've got this. So Netflix lovers, Amazon Prime video lovers out there, you're gonna get full definition, which is great. Not stuck in horrible standard definition. Internal storage, almost one of the fastest if we take a look at our random reads here that I have clocked over the phones I have been reviewing. So that is impressive. No bottlenecks whatsoever in the storage, in the RAM, and with this chipset too as well as expected. And there's that Antutu score. I'll show you that again before we move on now to the fingerprint reading speed and face unlocking. So fingerprint reading is very quick on this to unlock it. Now you can see where you need to press, but if you're gonna press it right now, you'll need to actually tap the screen first to wake it. 
and there we go really quick like that and it does actually move it looks like to me a few pixels out now and then so it shouldn't cause any screen burn and the face unlocking is almost as fast probably takes about a second longer you just lift it up and look at it if you do have that raise to wake enabled which i recommend if you're going to use face unlocking which of course is less secure than using your fingerprint now gaming performance, it really depends on the games and because this is such a new phone, a lot of them out there, like this title for example, League of Legends, are just not going to support the 90 frames per second option to match that 90 hertz screen. Now I've noticed that it's holding the whole time 60 frames per second, of course this chipset is faster. But can you actually see the difference between say a Snapdragon 855 Plus that I reviewed in the Republic of Gamers phone and then this? Not really, it's only in synthetic benchmarks. Now Xiaomi has got their game space mode here which gives you some options. So you can disable things like incoming calls, you don't wanna be interrupted when you're gaming. You've got a video record mode there as well. And we've also got a voice changer here and a few other little settings. Now it will tell you the load of the GPU, the CPU there as well, and the whole time it is stuck to 60 frames per second when I've been testing with this game right here. Now I have noticed that sometimes there seems to be like a little caching delay when it loads in an explosion or there's the sound coming through. So to me, this is still not as fast as the ASUS Republic of Gamers 2 phone at gaming. Of course, that model has a 120 hertz screen. And I still think if you're really into your Android games, that is probably the gaming model to go for. Even though this has the newer chip in it, the difference between them is really nothing. And the same thing with other titles like Call of Duty here. I'm locked to 60 frames per second because the settings just doesn't allow me to change that. But that of course will change when more of the game developers start to support the Mi 10. So sadly like all tech now, they are pretty much everyone dropping the 3.5 mm headphone jack. It's days are numbered sadly, even Samsung's dropping it. So we've got dual loudspeakers on this phone. This phone right here is my S10 Plus. Now the S10 Plus sells now for about a similar, in fact cheaper price than the Mi 10. It does have better loudspeakers, but it's not of course as fast. But I'll give you a small loudspeaker sample right now. That is 100% volume, and now the S10 Plus. S10 Plus loudspeakers do sound louder and slightly better to me. Now 3.5 millimeter to type C output, very good. Sounds great, no complaints there. And what about Bluetooth audio? Fine, great, tested it. And even call quality, here is a call quality sample. So here's a sample of the microphones. If you were to place a call, this is the kind of quality you would expect. It sounds exactly the same really to me, to my ears, as my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Overall, good call quality and the earpiece as well sounds great.
So this is the front-facing camera, and straight away you notice that the audio is better, but you also notice that we don't have any electronic image stabilization. I mean, come on, Xiaomi, this is a flagship. It's only got 1080p on this front-facing camera as well. Well, a lot of the competition will now be offering 4K 30 frames per second or even 4K 60 and possibly with stabilization. So they really need to change this up their game, give us electronic image stabilization with this front-facing camera because you need to use a gimbal because of the shakiness of this front-facing camera. So this is 4K video that does look quite saturated, a very kind of Samsung look to me. And it's very, very similar, the stabilization, which is excellent compared to the Mi Note 10. They're pretty much identical using the same sensor and optical image stabilization. Now I've noticed that when you pan around, there is sometimes a little bit of stutter that's coming through. This seems to happen on all phones using electronic image stabilization. And they will actually run up the stairs here just to show you. Now you probably noticed, as I mentioned before when we looked at the camera, that the audio bitrate has increased dramatically and the audio does sound very good to me. So I'm going to run now. You see the stabilization at work. And it's doing an excellent job here while jogging. And you can't swap over to the ultra wide or the two times zoom here either once you start recording. I have now switched over to the super stabilization mode, which I believe is still using that main sensor, but it's cropping in more 1080p maximum. And I'm going to jog slash run the best I can, holding a phone, of course, up here, to see that it really isn't actually that much better. Well, a bit more stable. But to me, I would still probably just use the 4K. Now you can also shoot in 4K, 30 frames per second, ultra wide here. And you know what? The stabilization is still very, very good. Really, I mean, I'm going to run again. I'm getting a good workout here with these videos. Look at how steady that is. It's, wow, I mean, why well, use that ultra steady mode when the ultra wide is super steady? Now, of course, it is struggling having the sun right there. That is normal for any of these small sensors. And you notice the sharpness here with the ultra wide camera, though, is not as good, understandably, as the main sensor. This is an 8K sample here, so we don't have any form of stabilization whatsoever, so it is very rocky. You're probably going to need to use a gimbal. So I'm out here where it's a little bit more windy, and you can hear that wind noise coming through. Very good audio quality. It's just a shame that we don't have a little bit of electronic image stabilization, or even optical, because you can see when I walk, I don't think that optical image stabilization is doing anything here. But sharpness good, saturation, it looks quite Samsung-like to me, this video. They have definitely boosted those colors up the saturation to create probably pleasant social media type video now some low light video so you can see here it's definitely dropped down and degraded a little bit but not too bad it's quite bright the image there is some grain to it and it is difficult for mobile phones to capture video with the front facing cameras especially in low light and now low light rear footage looks a lot brighter than it really actually is at the moment and you'll see when i walk along you definitely see some noticeable jarring in the image because of the conditions here, very difficult. So because I've been uploading videos to YouTube, connecting it and pulling the content off it, I don't have full battery stats just yet. Now this is typical of my reviews. That'll be in a follow-up video, but you can see I've lost 21% in two hours and 21 minutes. And that two hours and 21 minutes, I was recording 8K video, 4K video, gaming, and I was using it a lot with quite a high brightness. So it is looking very promising here, the battery life. But bear in mind, I am just on 4G. Now to quickly recap here, the photo quality, very good main sensor, amazing 4K image stabilization, ultra wide image stabilization, very, very good. Bit rate, finally, Xiaomi has improved that audio bit rate and audio quality on video now seems to me as good almost as my Samsung S10 Plus. Now I'm gonna have a lot of camera comparisons. They'll be up and coming in the channel. Camera comparison between the Mi Note 10 with the same camera setup, at least the main camera, will be in there. Now I'm disappointed to see no electronic image stabilization on the front facing camera yet again. That is a typical Xiaomi problem. Now it's not 100% smooth sailing with the ROM. There's one bug I've noticed with the camera that the settings menu can be a little bit choppy. Sometimes the setting gear icon is missing from the camera there, so you don't even see it to change it. And you cannot swap between the cameras once you start recording video. That's very minor. Now I do see some absolute minor, and I'm just nitpicking here. I'm being real, real fussy. Slightly laggy, stutty, stuttery, I'm stuttering myself, animations from the phone here and there, but really, I shouldn't even mention it because it is really, really good. But knowing, I mean, that's just what I do. I wanna mention everything so people know 100% that this really is a great phone. Now it is the most expensive. I mean, should you get it? Should you maybe get the Mi 10 Pro? Well, it really depends on what you want. 
I think we're gonna get, really to most people, you probably won't be able to tell. I don't know, I don't have it yet, but tell the difference between this great screen and then the pro screen, slightly brighter, slightly better color coverage that you probably can't even see with the naked eye. So really, not for that. Speakers, loudspeakers are good, not quite as good as the S10 Plus, but the pro model will have slightly better speakers, slightly less battery capacity. But it's hardly anything. What is it? 200 million hours. It, it's really not going to make any difference there. So, so far, big thumbs up from me. Well done, Xiaomi. Great phone. It's just got a few little minor bugs and things to iron out, as you can see listed with my pros and cons there. So as I mentioned, I will have plenty of camera comparisons. I hope to have the Mi 10 Pro in the channel maybe next week. So do subscribe, stick around for more content with this phone and future up and coming models. Thank you so much for watching this long, lengthy review. See you in the next one.